So, in this video, we are going to see how to solve a given problem by modified distribution method. Now, this table is given to us, this question is given to us. In this question, the IFS is already given to us. It means initial feasible solution with allocations is already given to us. So, we don't have to find the IFS. What we have to do is, the question is, we have to test this IFS. We have to test the solution for optimality, whether it is optimal solution or not. And if it is not optimal solution, then we have to use the modified distribution method, which in short is also called as Modi method, to change this solution and to obtain the optimal solution. So that is what we are going to do in this question. Earlier question, in earlier video, we have seen how to find the IFS. That is the initial feasible solution. This is the next level or next step of that. When the IFS is already given to us, how to see, how to test whether it is optimal or not. And if it is not optimal, then how to find the optimal solution? Okay, so now we will start with the solution. This is table number one that we have written. It is the same table that is given in the question, the IFS that is given in the question, given solution. What we will do is we will start with the modified distribution method. Step number one of modified distribution method is UV calculation. And very important to know that UV calculation is done, done only for allocations. This is the formula of UV calculation. U is equal to cost minus V and V is equal to cost minus U. So now we will start with UV. First value U1, we should always assume that's 0. Okay. So three rows are there. So U1, U2, U3 and four columns are there. So V1, V2, V3 and V4. So we always assume first value U1 as 0 and then we start. Now see where is the allocation in the first row. It is 200. So the next we will get from this u value, we will get the v value. See u and v is an alternate calculation. You get one u value, then you will get another v value. Then again you will get a u value. So you have u1 equal to 0. Come in the allocation 200. From here you will get v2. v is equal to cost minus u. Cost is 7 u is 0. So, 7 minus 0. So, u2, sorry, v2, you will get as 7. Now, from this, there is one more allocation here. So, you can go in u2. So, using this v2, you will find the value of u2. Allocation is 120. Cost is 18. Okay. So, how did we get this 7? From this u1. From 0, we came in 200. Cost was 7. So, this was 7 minus 0. So, you got it as 7. Now from this, you go in this allocation, you will get u2. Cost is 18. So 18 cost minus v. So 18 minus 7. So 18 minus 7, you will get it as 11. Now using this, again come down. Allocation here is 380. Cost is 7. So cost minus u. So formula of v is what? Cost minus u. So 7 minus 11. So 7 minus 11. So that is minus 4. So you will get it as minus 4. So v4 is, v4 is minus 4. Now using this minus 4, from this allocation you will get u3. Cost is 5. Cost minus v. So 5 minus minus 4. So minus minus will be plus. So it will be 5 plus 4, 9. Now from this you will get v3. Allocation is 100. Cost is 14. 14 minus 9. 5. So V3 will be 5. Then one more value is remaining here. That is V1. That also you will get from here. Allocation is 180. Cost is 11. Cost minus U. So 11 minus 9. So it is 2. So now you get all the U and V values. 0, 11, 9. And here it is 2, 7, 5 and minus 4. Okay. The next step in calculation is, this is the first step, UV. And the second step of Modi is delta calculation. And delta is calculated for empty cells. Means where there is no allocation. Okay. And formula of delta, delta is called opportunity cost. Delta is equal to cost minus u plus v. 
Okay, so now we will calculate delta for all empty cells. So first empty cell is x a. Cost is thirteen. Now look, see the corresponding u and v values. Here u is zero and v is two. So it will be thirteen minus zero plus two. So that will be eleven. Then next is x c. In x c, cost is nineteen and u is zero and v is five. So it will be 19 minus 0 plus 5. So 19 minus 5 will be 40. So the next empty cell is X D. Cost is 0. U is 0 and V is minus 4. So 0 plus minus 4. So this minus minus will be plus and delta will be 4. The next is Y A. Cost is 17. U value is 11 and V value is 2. So 17, 11, 2. So that will be 4. Then next is Y C. Cost is 15 and U is 11 and V is 5. So 15 minus 11 plus 5. 11 plus 5 is 16, so 15 minus 16 is minus 1. And the last empty cell is Z B. Cost is 22, and U is 9, and V is 7. So minus 16 minus 16, that is 6. Now the purpose of delta calculation is the Test of or test of optimality says that the solution is optimal when there is no negative delta. But here we have one negative delta minus one. So if there is a negative delta, it means solution is not optimal. So we say conclusion. So solution is not optimal. Now what we have to do when the solution is not optimal is from the cell which is having a negative delta. Now in our case it is Y C. So this is the Y C that is a cell with a minus delta. From a cell having a negative delta, we have to construct a closed loop. A closed loop looks something like this. It will start from negative delta cell. It will go in one allocation. Then from there it will cover a second allocation. From there it will go in the third allocation, and from there it will close. This is called a four corner loop. Another six corner loop is also possible sometimes, and it looks something like this. If you do not get a four corner loop in a solution which covers three continuous allocations, then you should search for a six corner loop. It will look something like this. Suppose this is the starting point of the loop. There is a negative delta. From there, it will go in one allocation. From there, it will go in a second allocation. From there, in a third allocation. From there, in a fourth allocation. And then from there, in a fifth allocation. And then it will close. This is called a six-corner loop. So either you get a four-corner loop, or you will get a six corner loop in your solution now if we see observe this and you can draw a loop in any direction clockwise or anti clockwise the loop will remain same now in our case our minus delta is in yc so our loop will start from yc if we go in a clockwise direction first we should check whether we get this kind of three continuous allocations from here if you go in 380 that is first Then from 380 you go in 20, that is second, and from 20 you go in 100, that is third. And from here you can close the loop. So we are getting this kind of a loop. So we will draw it. We start from here. We go in 380. Then from here we come in 20. Then from here we come in 100. And from here we close the loop. Now our loop is complete. Okay. So this was first, second, third, and from here we are closing the loop. So we have got a loop. So we will write here that our loop is we started from YC. 
Y C. Then we went into Y D. Then from Y D we went down in Z D. And from Z D we are coming in Z C. So it is a four corner loop. Y C, Y D, Z D, and Z C. Then always give signs at the loop, and the sign will look like this. From wherever we have started, the starting point of the loop, that starting point should be given plus sign, and then give alternate minus and plus sign. So if this is plus, this is minus. So this will be plus, and this is minus. Okay? You can give either in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Sign will remain same. Starting point is always plus. Okay? So now we have given the sign of the loop. So you write here the sign. Y C is plus. This is minus. This is plus. This is minus. Okay. Now observe the cell with minus sign. First is Y D, and the value is 380 here. And second is Z C, and the value is 100. Sorry. For Y D, the value for Y D the value is 380, and for Z C the value is 100. Out of this, select the lower value, and that is our change. So change is equal to 100. Okay, I repeat. How did we select the change? We consider the negative sign values, minus sign values, two negative sign values. One was 380 here, and the second is 100 here. Out of that, you select. The lower value, the lower value is 100. So we say that our change is 100. It means one, two, three, four, four corners are there. In these four corners, the values will change by 100. Where there is a plus sign, the value will increase by 100, and where there is a minus sign, the value will decrease by 100. And the other values like one, two, three, these three values outside the loop, they will remain same. Okay. So now we go in second table. And we will write the new values. Okay, so now our table one is ready. Table one is complete. We have drawn the loop. We know how much is our change. And so now we go in table two. First, you should write the values which are not going to change. So like this 200 will remain same. Then 120 will remain same. And this 180 will remain same. Now we come to the loop, and four corners are there. We start from the first, which is the starting point, with the plus sign. We know that our change is 100. So wherever there is a plus sign, it will increase by 100. Right now there is no value here. It means it is zero. So zero plus 100. So this value will become 100. Okay, that is YC. So now YC will become 100. Then you come to the next YD. It is 380 with a minus sign, so 380 minus 100. So 380 minus 100, this will become 280. Then we come down in ZD. ZD is 20 with plus sign, so 20 plus 100. So here ZD will become 120. 20 plus 100. Then C, it is okay. ZC, it is 100 with a minus sign. So 100 with a minus sign. So ZC 100 minus 100, it will become zero. It means it will become blank, empty. So nothing. Okay. So need not write zero here. Zero means blank. Okay. So now our table is complete. Now again we have to go as per this. First step is UV calculation and then second is delta calculation. So we take U1 and zero and start with the allocations for getting the other values. U and V. We calculate only for allocations. So now there is one allocation here, two hundred. V is equal to cost minus U, and U is equal to cost minus V. Okay, so we start from here. Cost is seven. You will get V two. Seven minus zero, seven. Now alternate calculation. So from here you will get U two. So now from here you go above. Cost is eighteen. Eighteen minus seven, eleven. Now from here again you come down in V, in V3. Cost 15, 15 minus 11, so V3 will be 4. From here you will also get V4 because there is the allocation. 
cost is 7, 7 minus 11, so V4 will be minus 4. Now from V4, there is an allocation here, so you will get U3. Cost is 5, cost minus V, 5 minus minus 4, so that will become plus, so 5 plus 4, 9. And from U3, we will get V1, cost is 11, 11 minus 9, V1 will be 2. Okay, after this, we can do delta calculation. For empty cells, first is XA, formula of delta, we have seen delta is equal to cost minus U plus V. Okay, so XA cost is 13 minus U is 0, V is 2, so 11. Then next is XC. Cost is 19, U is 0 and V is 4. So 19 minus 4 is 15. Then next is XD. Cost is 0, U is 0 and V is minus 4. So minus minus will be plus, so delta will be 4. Then YA, cost is 17 u is 11 and v is 2 so delta is 4 then next z b cost is 22 u is 9 v is 7 so 22 minus 16 is 6 and next is z c cost is 14 u is 9, v is 4, so it is 1. So conclusion, no negative delta, therefore optimal solution. So now we can say that our solution is optimal. And now we can calculate the cost, that is the optimal cost, because this is optimal solution, so corresponding cost we can say that it is optimal cost. So we multiply each allocation by its unit cost. So 200 by 7 plus 120 into 18 plus 100 into 15 plus 280 into 7. plus 180 into 11 plus 120 into 5 and when you add this you will get total cost as it is 96 double zero. So this is how we solve uh, transportation problem by modified distribution method. Okay. So now we have found that our total cost is 9600, 9600, that is our optimal cost. Why it is optimal cost? Because it corresponds with the optimal solution. So this is what, what the process of solving the modified distribution method.